Welcome to my studio. This is video number six and in this video we're going to do a drawing of a barn and we're going to use this barn to kind of illustrate two-point perspective. This is going to be a very basic uh, explanation of it. You can get books on how to do it but uh, as an artist you don't have to get that accurate. It just has to kind of look right. So if you're ready to draw let's get started. As you can see on this photograph right here I've drawn in a grid just like we did on video uh, number five and uh, this photograph is seven inches by ten and a half inches and I wanted to blow this picture up to like nine inches and we use the same procedure as in video number five to find this dimension which turns out to be thirteen and a half inches. Now in two-point perspective what they're talking about is if you're looking at the corner of a, of a building right here and the lines of this building are going to disappear to the vanishing point. Now the vanishing point in this picture is right here. If the mountains weren't there, this type of thing, if this was just a flat land, this would be where the sky and the land came together. And you've got the horizontal lines on this side of the building going off and they're going to converge at this vanishing point. If I drew these vanishing points way out past the limits of my paper, they would all converge to a single point. Same way there. Same way on this side, you don't see too many angles. There's this one going across there where these two points line up. There's a little board that goes across here, hard to see it. This one goes across there, and then of course the, the bottom of the building goes out here. And they would all, again, converge on a, on a vanishing point out here. I'll show you how on this uh, drawing right here, I've got the horizon line right here, and the vanishing point on this is right about there. And so you've got your roof line, would follow just like that. Your other, your bottom of your roof would line up about like that. And the bottom of the building would end up like this. So all the horizontal lines on this side of the building are gonna end up at, at, the, at the vanishing point right there. And the lines, horizontal, line, horizontal lines on this side of the building are going to end up at the vanishing point, which would be somewhere out in here. So, if that's a little bit confusing, this would be, this would be the one point, and then the other point over here would be two-point perspective. Now, like I said, if this is a little bit too confusing, you can use another way of finding out the angles. And that's with your grid. Just like we did on the, uh, the horse and rider. And because I've drawn this grid to match this grid, I can tell that the tip of my roof line is right there. Top of the gable is right about there. So I'm going to guess it's right about there on this drawing. Then the roof comes down and passes right through that intersection. And about a third of the way into this other line right here, this other box. So I put a point right there. This point right here is about halfway in the middle of the box and about halfway this way. So I can locate that point and I can locate it on that box. Now I just connect those two lines. And I have this line and I can locate this one. It's in this, this box right here. And it's about uh, just a little under halfway that direction and it's about just a little short of halfway mark on this one so estimate it right about there. Now I can draw those lines in. This point is just inside this line right about there. Again you kind of eyeball it and draw your, draw your size of your building down. And you can locate this point the same way. 
you can locate this point the same way and you locate this this point back here the same way and just connect those so now you've got your building is pretty much in perspective to this building I'm going to leave these dark lines in here so you can see what I'm doing so that's basically the the simplified version of uh, of how to do a two-point perspective one point perspective would be if you're looking at let me draw it on the back of him the, the most common illustration you see is someone standing in the middle of two railroad tracks so if you've got a railroad track right here and you've got one right here and you're looking out the distance it's going to those lines are going to converge right there that's your one point perspective you're standing right here viewing this so that's basic uh, perspective now we're going to get into a little bit more into the drawing of this i'm going to leave the like i said i'm going to leave these dark lines in here because uh, that way you can see uh, where the building is and and I drew them so dark that it'd be hard to erase them right now. You wouldn't want to draw them that dark if you're doing a finished drawing. But it's an easy way to find the perspective and uh, without having to actually go. Sometimes some drawings you may have a, the actual vanishing point may be way out beyond the edge of your table, but you don't want to do that. Uh, artist's perspective is not quite as accurate as the architects would use and it's just more that it looks right. So what I've done right here is I've added some value. I took my, uh, my uh, cotton swab with some graphite on it and I made a kind of a mid-tone. And from this mid-tone now, I can darken areas or I can lighten areas. And here I have darkened this section right in here and I'm gonna give it a little bit more graphite like so and some of these boards have really weathered differently and so there's you know there's a lot of different shades and patterns going on and underneath here and sometimes you'll see one board will just be really weathered and the one next to it will be almost white and we have some weathering here The boards, the boards have gotten darker. I'm going to soften that a little bit. Now up here, I've got an overhang, and so there's a shadow in here, and there's an overhang over here, shadow in there. And so I want to indicate that. And shadows like that that are created by a hard edge are probably going to, are going to have somewhat of a hard edge on the shadow. So if I come down here, I don't want to have to try to control the pencil. I can just put a, a, a ruler right here. And you know, actually right about there is where I want that shadow. So I can just come in here and let the ruler stop the pencil. It's just an easy way of creating a straight shaded line like that. See how that makes a, a nice even or a straight sharp line right there. Now down here, you've got shading. It's dark underneath the uh, roof overhang right here, but some of this down here is just weathering. So I'm gonna put some of that weathering in here. Like so, and then this area right where the roof and the side of the building join, that's gonna be quite dark. So I wanna put my pencil line up here and create create a nice dark line there and then another line and that's going to represent that overhang now I can shade that in just like this okay now I'll come down here a little bit so that's up there there's quite a bit of dark area underneath this little shelf that somebody has built on the side of this building. 
And now, as you can see it, if you can see it in the drawing here, there's a galvanized roof and it's got these ridges that go up like this. But you only see the ridges to about this point right here. Past that point, it just becomes a, a color or value. And so you don't have to run ridges all the way. These ridges are going to run parallel with this line right here. So, you might want to use a sharp pencil for that. If I start here and I work back, that way I can see how wide my line is and I'm staying consistent. So I'm just going to add a line right there. Another one about the same distance. Try to stay parallel with this line right here. And as I get further back here, these lines get closer together to where they almost totally merge. Well, they do totally merge. And then all you see is just a, a, a value. And I get about, about in here is where you start losing that definition. And we'll take our little blunt pencil here and we'll shade in this area up here. Just like so. And again, I'm running my, my uh, lines. Even though you're not going to see that detail here, I'm still shading in that same direction that the, uh, that the uh, roof lines are, or roof grooves in the roof are, are running. So. Some of those lines I may want to darken even a little bit more. Now, let's put a little bit of uh, graphite on this and soften it here. Don't worry again, don't worry about going over the edge there because we can always clean that up with, a, uh, with our eraser. And now at this point, I might want to pick out some highlights here. So... I'm going to put my ruler right here to kind of guide my eraser. And I'll just put a little highlight up in there. And there's some up in here. These little highlights like this are kind of clues that tell the, the viewer that there's a, something sticking out there. We use highlights all the time that or highlights. We lose, use uh, little clues like this all the time. We just don't, we just don't, we're, uh, we're just not aware of it. It's such a subtle thing that, uh, that it tells us where things are. It helps us to locate things and understand our environment. And let's see, I'm just going to take out a little bit of this graphite up here. It's a little lighter. That type of thing. So now underneath the roof, there's an overhang right here. So there's a nice shadow that goes right down the building there. And we're going to use our ruler, our straight edge. And I'll put it on the roof there. And I'll create a dark line right there. And then I want to put my ruler at the bottom here so I can just shade up to that line and I can create a, a a fairly straight line across the bottom. Just go up like this. I'm going to end up going up past that line a little bit, but that's all right. Okay. Now I can take a little smudge stick just like that and I think I will darken this area right underneath here a little bit more 
so that edge stands out a little stronger. Okay, now we want to start working on this side of the building. And as you can see, for some reason, these boards have really weathered down below here, but they're quite fresh up here. So something's happening there, but we can indicate that very nicely with our drawing. And they're a little uneven, so I don't have to worry so much about having a straight line across there. But I do want to indicate these boards. So I'm going to take a little sharp pencil here. And just like we did with the roof, as you, you can see the detail right here, but as you get past this point right here, it starts to disappear. So we'll put a line in here. That's that edge of the building. Then we just start uh, putting in our vertical lines here. And try to keep them straight. I'm not going to bring them all the way down because once they get into this dark area, you don't really see the uh, the line so much. And they start to get, as they go towards the back, they start to get a little bit more uh, uh, closer together. And then they're so close together, it just looks like one color value. Okay, now I'm going to put my pencil, or my eraser, uh, sorry, I'm going to put my ruler here early in the morning. And I'm going to start uh, bringing up the sides of these buildings here. And I'm going to let that just kind of be sort of uneven across there. And just fill that in. Again, running my lines in the same direction I know the lines on the board are going, even though we don't see them at this point. Now there's a, some kind of structure sticking out here. I'm not really sure what that is. Looks like I need to go up above a little bit further up here my lines here. They come across like this. And this little structure right here, I'm just gonna shield it with my uh, with my ruler and then I can come right down to it there. And then we can begin to shade, add some, add some value up here into this area. Like that. Now this, these boards down here are quite a bit darker. So it doesn't hurt to add some more graphite in there. And if a line shows up, even though you're, as long as you're going in the same direction as the lines on the board, it'll just look natural. Okay. And there's a few little things going on there. I'm going to darken this doorway here because the, um, the top of the door comes across here. And again, that is pointing out here at this vanishing point. So, and I know where that's at, so it's right there. So the top of my door is right about in there. And I'm going to just shade that a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to put this dark door entrance here then. Again, if you're drawing architectural things, structures are nice ruler is 
is really handy. It helps you to keep things straight. You don't need it if you're doing a landscape because nature seldom has straight lines. But with man-made buildings, you need them. So now we'll put in a lot more graphic here, graphite will, we will uh, let a little bit, we'll put in a little less graphite right down here because I don't know if you can see it on this photograph, but there's something going on like there's hay stored in here. This is a much darker area than this one. So I wanna indicate that a little bit. So we'll come down here like so. And then we'll just come down here and make that a little bit lighter. And again, I can take my blending stick here. And you can make these if you're stuck in the house, you can't get out to buy something like this. If you've got some newspaper, you can roll it up real tight and use the same kind of thing. Okay. All right. Now we've got a lot accomplished here on this drawing. So I want to start putting in some little bit more detail. There's a some kind of structure. I can't tell what these are, but they're a big wide board that comes across there like that. And another one over here, and then there's one just underneath here. There's a edge of it right there. Sometimes you just kind of treat these things like an abstract shape. And uh, don't worry about being totally accurate with it. And these boards, again, they go out here to this vanishing point. And I'm going to have to switch back to a little bit harder pencil here, or sharper pencil. And I'll just put some in there. See how you do that? You just keep it lined up on that point and, and then it all falls into place. Just like so. And we'll assume that you're going to continue that down a little bit. Put this in here. Let me run these lines this way. And there's a, you can see some of the lines there. Okay, now we can start to do a little bit with the, uh, with the grass that's sort of grown up around here. There's a few little bushes and I think this is a, Looks like it's out in the middle of a pasture, so they, they don't mow real close like you would a yard, something like that. So we're just gonna kind of break that straight line up there so it's kind of uneven. Just like that. Okay, now I think I will, if you wanna get into really detail, there's a, Coordinated roofs have little ridges like that. They they look like this. They go across like that. And so you would see that indicated on the edge down here. So you might, it's not going to be a real straight, clean edge going across. So you might indicate that just a little bit. So that you know that that's not just a straight edge. All these little clues tell the viewer what's what they're actually looking at. And like I said, we use these all the time. 
We just do it so fast and so so uh, effortlessly that we aren't even aware of it half the time. But all these are little tr tools that the artist uses to uh, to create the illusion of a three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. All right. Now I've used the uh, the grids here also to locate these these posts here, and they in the bottom they do kind of go back recede into the distance, uh, just uh, because they're all on the same level ground. But you can't. But they're quite uneven up here. This this post and this post are probably different heights. This looks like a shorter post, so you're not going to get the the effect going this way, so I wouldn't worry about it. But here we want to keep these posts in line, and we don't have to do a lot of perspective drawing to get that. We can just locate them here on the grid, and they're right about there. Now you have a choice whether you even want to put them in your drawing. You may not. So they go up here past this point, and then they go clear up into here. This first post is just up here past this top line, and then it kind of jagged like that. And it comes down like that. Now the second post, because they're kind of going in a, in a line back to here, the second post is right right there. You can just see it peeking out just a little bit from the behind this first post. It's down like that. Now there's another post right here and it's about up in just a little bit above the horizon line there. So it's about like that. Okay. And then there's a, a post down here that's just about a, a third of the way down, right about in there. Actually, it's more like a right about in there. And then it goes up to right, right in here. And, we're, and there's a distant distance between the two, so it comes down. It kind of leans forward a little bit. Okay, now we've got our shape in there. I started to do some of the uh, uh, tree line back here, and again, what I did is I used my ruler to give me a straight edge across here, and then I just let my lines come up here a little bit, kind of free. And I'm going to put a little bit of variation in there because it's not totally smooth. This is tree, so you're going to have some, some dark areas and some light areas. Okay, and then, now here's where we talk about, the, the other day we were talking about the atmospheric perspective. As you can see right here, you get darker, and as these mountains are quite a bit further away, they're lighter. And this set of mountains right here is even further away. This one here is... This one's further away than this one because it's lighter. Uh, this is a little closer than this because it's darker. And then you get this mountain right here. It's These two are way back in the back. And again, that's one of those little visual clues that helps us identify our world around us. If we didn't have those things, we couldn't navigate. We couldn't get around. It would be a real challenge just to go to the store. Okay, so then there's very subtle and very subtle uh, shading differences here in the mountains, and we just want to indicate some of that. We can take out some of that with the uh, eraser, and uh, we'll do that. Just uh, lightly take out some areas where you've got little gullies. 
and uh, ridges and that type of thing. Same on this other side over here. I've got this range of uh, trees right here. They come right across there like that. And they actually start out kind of low and then they sort of rise up here. So I'm gonna put my, put my uh, ruler right on that and again, they're pretty dark. So you want to uh, try to keep them the same as this on this side because that's the same distance from the viewer. And I'm gonna darken that value in. But I wanna make sure I don't go too dark because it's gotta match this area here because they're around the same distance. How do I know that? Well, because they're the, they're the same shade of green. So if they were further apart, one of them would be lighter than the other or darker than the other. So that tells you. And get that in like that. Okay, now I'm take my little smudge tool here and soften that. And if you're going this direction with your shading lines, take your smudge tool and go the opposite direction. It helps to, uh, to blend that. I'm just going to do a couple more little things here and then you know we'll stop at this point because it, you can carry this on quite a ways you know it depends on how much detail you want to get now this mountain range back here is a little bit closer than this one so i want it to be a little bit darker it comes down right across there but i don't want it to be as dark as this one so i'll just make it a little bit lighter like that. And again, we'll use our smudge tool. Okay, and now this mountain back here is quite light, so we just really want to have a light touch here. Okay. And the same thing goes with this one back here. This mountain is really light. It's almost, you can't even see it. In fact, I don't even think I'm gonna shade it with pencil. I'm just gonna use my smudge tool because you've got enough lead on that. And if you have a uh, kneaded eraser and you've gone um, too dark, you can take and lift some of that, just like that. And they're nice because you can lift certain areas in there like that and uh because there's clouds in the sky so those clouds are going to be casting shadows on the mountains here all right so at this point right here i think we're going to stop because it's just a matter of putting in details and again this area up front here you might want to indicate a little bit more detail with this uh with this grass because uh it is in the foreground, and uh, I hope that uh, that explains something about the uh, perspective. Again, it's this is a very simplified version. You can get books on perspective, and it really gets into detail. But uh, from an artist's point of view, you don't really need to get into that kind of detail. I hope that was uh, informative. I hope you learned something, and. Uh, 
I hope it wasn't too long. My granddaughter still says I talk too much. So um, we're going to do uh, video number seven next. So join me then.